Well, let's check in with Nick Lester, who's uh, at the US Open for us here on the first serve. Uh, Nick, uh, what a day. I mean, Layla Fernandez has been the story of the day. We now know who she's going to play in the semifinals, the number two seed, Arena Sabalenka. But it was Arthur Ashe was absolutely electric earlier in the day. You called that match, and this uh, unbelievable journey continues for a 19-year-old from Canada. Gee, go back two years ago. It's a very familiar sort of story. Yeah, there's a lot of teenagers from Canada, aren't there, that we've talked about. In fact, there's a lot of players from Canada who are making a big name for themselves, as we know, in this sport. But uh, just a phenomenal performance today, Brett. Great composure. I love how early she takes the ball. You know, she's able to really stand the height of the baseline. She can change direction. The forehand's the big shot. But she also has a really good hand skills. You know, when she's asked to defend, Svitolina was putting under a bit of pressure today, especially in the third set. She's got a really good slice backhand. She's got a really good understanding, it seems to me, of how to play a match, you know, how to, how to kind of get the feel of a match, when to make the ball, when to be aggressive, when not to be aggressive. Obviously, the lefty serve, as we know on these quick courts, helps her out a fair bit as well. Um, and she's had a tough draw, Brett, you know? You look at it, Konya first round, Kanepi second round. We know how good Kanepi's been. Osaka, you know, she's been two former champions. This has not been a walk in the park in terms of the, the players she's played. And again, staring down Svitolina, as you well know, one of the toughest competitors in the sport, in a breaker in the third, takes a lot of doing. And, and impressive, Nick, that, I mean, here she is serving at a 5-3, gets broken, so she has all this momentum, loses the momentum, and then her ability to sort of get it back. They're pretty impressive for a 19-year-old just to be able to stay in the moment. Yeah, and, you know, she's talked all week about how basically the, the message from her parents and her dad in particular has been to try and enjoy it. You go back and listen to, listen to her talk and the, the overwhelming sort of overriding theme has been, I've got to try and enjoy my tennis a bit more. You know, this is what I work for. And she has obviously been able to channel that kind of, Love for what she's doing out there. She is another player, Brett, I have to say, who has plugged into the crowd impressively. Yeah. You know, it has been a recurring theme this week of players making the most of their environment. And she certainly has made the most of the environment. She has whipped them, whipped them up. She's got them on her side. Uh, she has a game, an exciting game. She has a, you know, for the large part, an aggressive game. Um, and she is just someone who has a lot of, you know, confidence, but also I think a lot of, you know, just personality, on-court personality, and New Yorkers will buy into that all day long. Oh, they're falling in love with their personality and that smile, no doubt. Just engaging and, yeah, mature head on uh, very, very uh, young shoulders. And, and, and for those, you know, if you read the backstory, you know, she's got, there's a few siblings in the family. She's always been highly competitive, not just tennis, other sports. She's always believed she could win, uh, even beating her dad at soccer, even though she thinks, well, it's probably unlikely. But she, she, that's the sort of girl uh, that we're uh, talking about. So now she matches up against Arena Sabalenka, back-to-back semi. So it was a little scratchy against uh, Krachikova, but she closed out the match well. Fernandez today has hit more winners, more unforced errors from Sabalenka, but she brings the experience as she tries to go a step further. It's an incredible matchup. I mean, just what you've taken out of today, what do you take into this matchup? I mean, I think it's day and night in terms of what she faced today. Obviously, with Switzerlina, she's, you know, Sabalenka's going to get a lot more free points off her serve, first of all. She's going to get, you know, defensively, Fernandez is going to have to work a lot harder without a shadow of a doubt because, as we know, Sabalenka hits up one of the biggest balls in women's tennis both off both sides. She, when she serves well, as she's yeah. doing, in, uh, and, and these courts are fast. And the balls are light here, Brett. The balls are very light, and they are flying. And that suits Sabalenka, very much suits Sabalenka. I think, just on judging by having seen both women play today, I think Fernandez is going to struggle to dictate as many rallies. I think she's going to be pushed off the baseline a little bit more consistently. And that, for me, would be a slight concern. And as well as throwing in the extra bit of experience, obviously, Sabalenka, having really not done a whole lot of majors, has now made two semifinals in a row. So she's had a good summer. Um, I feel like Sabalenka's played a really good tournament. You know, hasn't done a lot wrong, flown under the radar. And, you know, the, the conditions, as I keep saying, really do suit her well. It's fascinating, isn't it? I mean, we, we sort of are expecting in the second week that the 18, the 19 year olds will fall over at some point. Maybe it's just not their time, but. Who knows? Uh, you go into battle one-on-one, but 
yeah, Sabalenka. I mean, she's hungry to get to that next step. So that is going to be a terrific matchup. The other two women's quarters, Nick, coming up tomorrow. Your girl, Emma Raducanu, can she keep this uh, unbelievable run going? Belinda Benchich, her best performances have come at the US Open. So she loves the hard courts of Flushing Meadows. And then Carolina Pliskova, now Svitolina's gone. Is it still on her racket, the way she's serving at the moment? Maria Suckery, I mean, you, you were hosting last night the World Feed. She looked as energetic at the end as she looked at the start. And I think a few hours later, she was back doing two-on-ones in practice uh, today. So she's got boundless energy, how she recovers. Pliskova's serving great. What are your thoughts on those uh, two quarterfinals? I mean, Emma's rise has been incredible, Brett, hasn't it? For a, for a lady who hadn't played a lot of tennis over the last year or so, domestically, as I said to you the other day, Emma played a lot in Great Britain last year. She was she was doing a lot of studying, uh, benefited actually from a lot of domestic events that were put on back in my homeland. We had a lot of events that were additionally put on because of COVID, so she got to get quite a few matches in. Um, the, the amazing story with Wimbledon this year was, of course, you've got to remember that she wasn't awarded a wild card originally, Brett. Initially, she wasn't awarded a wild card. They didn't think that she was good enough. She got a couple of wins the week before, got that wild card at Wimbledon, made the last 16, came out here, given a couple of wild cards, won a lot of matches. I, I know, having spoken to a couple of coaches, Mark Petchy, I know, worked a lot with her last year. He was always big on her prospects. I always spoke to Mark and he said he felt she had some, some really good prospects in terms of her game. Um, very, very bright girl, enjoying the occasion. It's, you know, she hits such a clean ball, Brett. You know, you watch her play and the time she has on the ball is just exceptional. And that bodes well, obviously, for her. Um, again, tomorrow, a big step up, I feel. Shelby Rogers kind of froze. I spoke to Shelby's coach, actually, or a former coach the other day, and he was disappointed with the way Shelby kind of performed on that stage. Didn't quite step up. Pressure was on, obviously, facing Emma. I don't think Benchich will be like that tomorrow. Benchich just looks super relaxed here. Gold medal under, under her belt. Um, feels like it's so much different, you know, just allowed her to kind of free up a little bit. Only semi-final of the major came here uh, and again, likes these low bouncing courts. The flat hitters, Brett, always play well on low bouncing courts, as you know, and that fits Benchich to a T. So I'm slightly favoring Benchich tomorrow. I, I think she's probably going to have the tools just to keep Raducanu on the back foot a little more often. Mm. Please give up. Zachary. Yeah, I mean, as you say, tough one to call, really. I mean, as you say, last night was extraordinary. Three and a half hours, uh, Andrescu on her knees, somehow managed to finish the match. Zachary, as you say, could look like she could have gone another play, another couple of sets. Tough one to call. I haven't seen a lot of Pliskova, if I'm absolutely honest with you, at this tournament. She's been a little bit more on the outside courts, but she's always there or thereabouts, isn't she? I guess the big hurdle for her is when it comes deep in majors, how can she can deal with it? Uh, the matchup so often in that regard is is how Sakari returns the serve. Mm. I think probably Sakari physically has a little more about her than Lishkiva. Defensively, I've been really impressed with Maria's improvements this year. Getting more off the serve, more free points off her serve. Um, tough one to call, but I think from what I've seen of Sakari here, I'd have to probably slightly lean towards her. I think she's got a slightly more all-round game. Well, we're going to have another new women's champion, which is phenomenal. I mean, this trend, uh, you know, this is why it is the hardest question to answer in tennis leading into a slam. Who's going to win the women's? Because there are so many. As I let you go, can, can you, at this stage, can you sort of have one that you think, gee, might just be ahead of everyone else? Or is it just, is it too hard to call at this stage? I feel like from what I've seen today, Sabalenka would be my call right now. I think the way she's playing, She's got over the hump of majors now. I appreciate she hasn't played in a major final. Um, so that's obviously going to be a factor. But I just feel like her curve, her curve over the last couple of years has been trending in the right direction. Um, and now she's performing deep at majors. I think the run at Wimbledon helped her massively. Uh, and again, you know, in quick conditions, she will benefit because she, when she hits her spots, she is a very tough player to defend against. And I, and I feel like the confidence that she has in her own game right now He's allowing her to play with a bit of freedom, with good aggression, and, and that bodes well for me going into the weekend. Oh, she's great to watch, and she's got a bit of personality to go with it. So it's a nice uh, combination, uh, firepower and uh, a big smile, and uh, she's got uh, plenty of thoughts on the game. Had double success, of course, at uh, Flushing Meadow, so now trying to get the single success. Thanks, Nick. Uh, huge day coming up tomorrow. We'll let you get some rest. We'll do it again. Cheers, Brad.